Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. These kind of topics uh, make you want to turn to drink, right? And also smoking. I was at a bulk food store and I bought a kilogram of these things. Really good price. I, they're hard to get. I used to um, use them all the time when I was growing up, when I was a kid. But uh, anyway, um, this these topics can can require us to do some um, things that we might otherwise not do. So I'm going to talk about if you followed my videos, if you follow my blogs, if you followed my stuff for years and years. The whole idea is that we're undergoing very, very rapid climate change, abrupt climate change, and it's destabilizing the weather systems on our planet. So we're getting increases in frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events, and that is going to, as the abruptness, the rapidity of climate change continues, uh, it's going to disrupt global food supplies is, is a weak spot going to cause massive increases in human migration around the planet that's already happening it's going to cause greatly accelerating sea level rise which is going to swamp coastal cities that's in the near term in the cards we we're going to lose all the ice in the arctic the ice the arctic is going to turn to a much warmer wetter non-ice and snow place and that's feeding back to the whole climate system to completely destabilize and fracture the, the jet stream. So this is where we're heading. Um, before you go and before you go and walk on a bridge and look down and sort of contemplate things you shouldn't do, um, Google Healthy Climate Alliance, Google Climate Restoration. Okay, I'm going to talk in separate videos about these groups. Um, the about what we actually need to do to restore a stable climate. The whole objective of these groups is that it's intergenerational equity or equality, if you like. We want our grandkids to experience the planet, to experience the weather and the climate uh, as we did growing up. So all we want is a stable climate for for our grandkids. So this is all we're trying to do. So what do we need? What are the steps that we need to do in order to achieve this? Okay, so getting back to this report here, uh, US, uh, US group is CLIVAR, Climate Variability and Predictability Group. Okay, so March 2018, very recently, this review paper or summary uh, came out and it's all about the Arctic change, so Arctic amplification of temperatures and the possible influence. It says possible. I mean, we know, I've been saying for <laughs> since 2010 that this is, it has to happen. But anyway, this is the mainstream science, you know, coming through. Um, and possible influence on mid latitude climate and weather. Okay, a white paper. Okay, so before I get to that, um, I'm going to talk about that in detail in, in, in a large number of videos. So earlier today, I sent an email to, to uh, David, my great friend and uh, web person and strategic advisor on stuff. Um, he's down here. Uh, where is it? Uh, there's links to him. He posted. Where, where's the link? Anyway, um, his comments, if you see DK, David, then there's links to his site and stuff. If you need help with strategic analysis or websites, then, you know, David, David's great. We've been working together for over two years. Um, and I emailed him, I emailed him this testimonial that, that I got just um, indirectly just yesterday. And I, I want to share it for a minute. Okay, um, Stuart is a great friend. Um, he's gone to so many conference of, of parties, the IPCC COPS. I met, he invited me out to Lima, Peru in 2014, said I got air miles come out 
Um, so I did, and that was my first uh, COP, COP20. Then I went back to Paris the year after, COP21. Took a break for a couple of years. I'm hoping to go to Poland um, to the, the one this year. So anyway, um, Stuart, um, basically he, he, we, I did some, he did some, we did some filming recently. Like he, he interviewed Peter Wadhams and did a couple of videos. He interviewed me, he's breaking it up and doing a bunch of videos. And we're talking again early next week. I'll post all the links to that. Um, a, a mutual friend, Mike, um, had the most energy efficient house in the UK and because of climate change decided to move elsewhere. So he's up on, on an island, the Isle of Skye in, in Scotland, and he's building a new house. So he's a great video editor, um, doing it sort of in his retirement from, he, he's a musician. Um, so anyway, this is a testimony. This is what I'd like to highlight. So Stuart got this email and this person said, I probably learned the most about climate change from the plethora. And there's a plethora. I've got huge numbers of videos of Paul Beck with YouTubes I've absorbed in the last few months. His style is more than a little clunky. Clunky? Really? I'll have to work on honing my skills. But he says to me that's part of the appeal. So I guess I got to keep the clunkiness. He's a humble, unpretentious genius with encyclopedic knowledge and is a natural, has a natural teacher's heart. And I love that he's a straight shooter, but very responsible with his aim. Boom. Okay, so basically doing something right. So this was a this was a great. I read this, and you know it's funny. I showed this to my. I, I emailed this to my um, spouse, my wife, and she said, "It's cute." And I said, "Well, what, what, what cute?" She said, "Well," and I said, "I'm going to post this on my website." And she said, "Well, it says clunky and stuff. Maybe you shouldn't post this." But anyway, um, so and then I wrote this to Stuart. And I expected maybe he'd post it in, you know, the next day or five hours or 10 hours. But within an hour, this was up on the website. So I'll show you here. I put, please stay tuned for my next series of videos. With a fine tooth comb and an enormous magnifying glass, I am reviewing an extensive document summarizing the views and findings from a meeting of at least 100 scientists on Arctic change and possible influence of mid, on mid-latitude climate and weather. Lots of good things in the report, but it misses a lot of things. You know, possible in the title, that's like too wishy-washy. So my video review, I'm going to do many videos examining, analyzing, and critiquing every aspect of this topic. Um, so thanks for your patience. I haven't done a video for five days, so I stuck that in. You know, and hopefully, you know, please follow my videos. If you like them, please donate something, you know, anything to support my quest to explain what the hell is happening to our climate, weather, and planet? Okay, so the first video here. So Clivar, what's this Clivar group? Climate and ocean, variability, predictability, and change. Very, very good website. Loads of stuff here. Okay, there's loads of reports that are well worth looking at. Um, they offer summer schools. They connect scientists together. They set up working groups on things like looking at warming in the Arctic and how it affects um, mid-latitude weather patterns, if it does. Okay, so there's lots of good stuff on this site, highly recommended, and there's lots of publication documents on different topics. So there's, there's meetings and stuff on the AMOC, the ocean currents, of course, on the Arctic warming and connection to lower latitudes. Um, you know, I would like to see lots of other ones, but Anyway, and they also have a, a, a Twitter site or, or a Twitter uh, handle. Okay, so have a look at this group. Now, under the publications and documents, um, sea level stuff, right? There's loads and loads of stuff, okay? So um, Southern Ocean stuff, um, they're doing a conference on salinity, getting experts in salinity and so on. So they do all kinds of stuff. The, there's a group called the Arctic Mid-Latitude Working Group. Okay, they were formed in May 2015. They're, they're trying to understand the coupling between Arctic variability and mid-latitude climate by synthesizing the ongoing efforts of everybody. Okay, so, and they have, you can read this. I'm not going to talk about all this because I want to get to the report. But these are some of the people that are in this group. Okay, uh, Jennifer Francis sticks out. 
Maslowski, remember this guy, said that sea ice would be gone in uh, around 2017, plus or minus three years, prop most accurate model, regional Arctic model. Um, Vavris did the paper, you know, the paper Francis and Vavris in 2012 was sort of a landmark classic paper on how jet streams were becoming wavier due to Arctic warming. Um, okay, there's lots of people here, and he's been, this guy Zhang's been doing tremendous amounts of work uh, recently, many papers on the Arctic. Okay, so that's the group, okay? And <clears throat> this is a conference that they had February of last year. Okay, so they had a conference on perennial sea ice retreat, being a wake-up call to the climate community, wake-up call to the world, that uh, climate change is not necessarily slow and steady. You know, we could have these tipping points going on, and they tried to understand the profound changes in the Arctic system and how it's affecting the planet, okay? Okay, so these guys, and then um, basically this is their report. Okay, so they just came out with this report here. So you can click on the link and you can find that report. Okay, and uh, I'm not sure why this is the same as the last one. Okay, so you can get the report. And then if you go and uh, download the PDF, okay, there's a little bit of blurb on the, on the report. If you click on that link and to download it, you can do that. And then if you, if you download the PDF, this is, this is a document in PDF uh, format. Okay, so it's, it's uh, you know, it says it's 41 pages. It tells me it's, it's about 45 pages on Adobe. But basically, we're gonna look at this, okay? So, you know, I, I have to, <clears throat> I have to joke. I mean, I've been talking about the, from, the, the links from the Arctic warming to destabilizing jet streams and ocean currents and all the rest of it. Just based on the big picture, looking down at the earth, this has to happen because the jet streams are formed by the temperature difference between the cold, Arctic and the warm equator, and as the Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet, those jet streams behave differently, storms behave differently, everything changes. You know, I've been talking about this for, for since about 2010, actually. Um, I could show you a presentation I gave in 2010 talking about this exact thing. So over the years, of course, you know, science, mainstream science, you have to build on other papers and find all of the connections, make no assumptions, be skeptical of everything. So this is the 2018 state-of-the-art version. And I'm, there's a lot of good things about this, but they are missing some things. I'm gonna talk about those differences. So, okay, so here we go. Okay, so 45 pages it says here. Okay, so nice uh, picture, of course, mandatory picture of ice vanishing in the Arctic. Okay, lots of authors, there are lots of people on, on this um, working group. Um, and there's different sections and I'll go to, so there's many people, this is a contribution. Now, one thing right off the bat is they got, their editing sucks, okay? Like, exec, exec sutiv, this should be a C obviously, like right in the table of contents, they spell executive wrong. And then, okay, well, we'll bypass, we'll forget about that. A, a bird, right? Where's the S in there? Come on, guys, don't you have, did you have somebody even just read through this thing and edit it? I made a note of all the errors. I'll contact them and say, you know, please correct your document. You know, it looks unprofessional when you do that. So chapter one is the character and mechanisms of Arctic amplification. The observed changes in the Arctic, why we get Arctic amplification. Most people know about the albedo feedback, which I think is, which is very important, not just for sea ice, but also for declining snow cover. Uh, but there's other, other things that are also very important, especially with the jet stream waviness. Now we're getting all this warm air going up to the Arctic, warm, moist air, and we're getting cold, dry air leaving the Arctic. The models and the spread in the models, improving our understanding, then Arctic and mid-latitude linkage physics, Next step in rep recommendations and references, okay? So this is just the intro video. I'm going to talk about all of these things so that you can have a much better understanding of our changing planet. Thank you.